Hello everyone, welcome to another week in our garden. We've had a wonderful week this week, several days of rain, which is very, very welcome. I think every garden in the country was looking forward to that. Now, because of the rain, I haven't been able to get in the garden. Yesterday, we went to a wedding, which took all day. Here we are, we're on a Saturday film, so it'll only be a short one, but we'll update on harvesting after the rain okay now I've been down the garden this morning and done a harvest and I've left everything in trays where I've harvested it so I can show you rather than walking on the very very wet land we don't really want to walk on it while it's this wet so we'll go through what we've done from the bottom to the top and then we'll do a little harvest in the greenhouse as well we've got some more cucumbers ready so we'll do those so we'll start with what we harvested at the potato courgette area, okay? This is what I harvested from the very bottom of the garden. You see a nice bit of rhubarb there. Some nice new potatoes, two roots there. Not producing a lot because of the dry weather we had. And of course the courgettes, now the rain has brought the courgettes, brought the courgettes on beautifully. Uh, the larger courgettes will be chopped up and frozen ready for use as soups and stews for the winter. These are the broad beans that we had in this bed just here. I've harvested them all now and I've put the tops into the compost bin. I've taken them all out from here and I've just forked the top over just to break it up and let the water that's standing in it drain away a little. It's very very wet. Right so now we'll move up to the brassica bed and see what we've got ready in there to lift. On our way to the brassicas, I nearly forgot that I've lifted a couple of those nice big lettuce and the onions have all been lifted now and that's been forked over. This is where the onions were, these are the Japanese overwintered onions. The same again, I've just lifted them, I've put the rest of them in the shed and I've just forked the top over just to break it a bit. It is drying out nicely now. This is what I've lifted out of the brassica frames this morning. A couple of kohlrabi, some nice broccoli heads, and the first of the nice cabbage. That really is a firm cabbage. And I've got another cabbage there to have lifted. I'll just show you how big they are when they come out the frame. So this is the cabbage as they are lifted out the frames. You see they're quite big. It's gone down a little now because I was waiting to film. But now I should remove the outside leaves and put this with the other one to go up. Now, as you can see, I've harvested the white currants, which are actually pink, but they're like little pearls. They're absolutely beautiful and they taste so sweet. That was one bush. We've only got one bush of white currants, and that's this this year's crop off it. As you can see, it's quite a crop. I also picked a few strawberries for tea tonight. Now the strawberries are going over fast now, so we need to get picked as much as we can. I also picked some red currants that were ready in there that will go nicely with the strawberries in a nice cold pudding. They'll be rather nice. And the cherries are now ready, so I picked half the cherries and we'll pick the other half now and finish this tray off. So we'll harvest the last few of the cherries. I've just taken the net off. If we didn't have that net on, there would be no cherries at all on, on the tree. Now these are Merlot cherries, so they're what they call sour cherries, so they can be used in cooking, they're rather nice but it is facing north, so it's done quite well, especially after that late frost we had. Now the pruning, stone fruits, we'll do in the next week or so when it's a nice dry period. Don't do your stone fruits while it's wet. So I'll harvest this side, I've harvested that side, so I'll harvest this side, and then I'll show you what we've got. That's the rest of the cherries picked now. So we'll make our way up to the greenhouse to start the harvest in the greenhouse. Hi, here we are in the greenhouse. It's absolutely boiling here. You wouldn't have thought that three days ago we had torrential rain and so cold, we put the heating on in the house. It was that cold. 
Still, we're here to harvest, so we'll start by harvesting the cucumbers that are ready. Okay. Right. This time, I haven't brought the crane, but I can just manage one at a time. They're a bit straighter than that slot. This marking is where it's been rubbing on the stem of the plant. You can't really stop it. That's this this side cucumber now. We've met, we're taking the fruit off now. So what we'll find now is that the fruit at the top here will start to mature. Normally while you've got fruit at the bottom, these fruits that come on won't make anything until we remove it. And as you can see, I've started to take it across the top now. And there are fruits still coming on it, as you can see. Now, I've been asked about the difference between greenhouse cucumbers and cucumbers that you grow outdoors or in a cold frame. Now these, what we use in the greenhouse, they are all female and they do not need any pollinating. The ones that you grow outdoors are called ridge cucumbers and they have male and female flowers on. These only have female flowers on and they like the warmth more than the ridge ones. Ridge ones tend to be a bit knobbly but not all. Depends which variety you're growing. You will once you've planted them, obviously when it's nice and warm, June, early June, let them grow on and when you get to about six leaves, stop it. And then the breaks will form a nice mat, or if you're climbing it, a nice frame, if you like, of cucumbers growing, growing up. But remember, do not remove the male flowers. Leave those on because outdoors or in a cold frame you will need pollination. The other thing to remember if you're outdoors do not use two varieties. If you use two varieties they'll cross pollinate and they will make the cucumbers taste a little bitter. We don't want that. Now reading the seed merchants books etc I see there is an all-female variety are now available for growing outdoor and in cold frames. I think it was actually bred in Japan, so keep your eye out, see if you can see it, it might help. Still, we have another cucumber to harvest yet, so I'll nip across the greenhouse to the other side and get that one. This is the other cucumber we've got in the greenhouse. We've put one that side, one this side. I think, if I remember right, that side of the greenhouse always grows faster cucumbers, if you like. These tend to take a little more time, but saying that, they've got two lovely cucumbers on, so we'll harvest them. There you are, we've still got the flower on that one. I'll pass it to Diane. I'm actually going to, they're not quite so big as that side, but I think we've got about five, so we'll take them all. Oops, sorry Kane. And believe it or not, there's still another one ready. I do believe we're going to be eating cucumbers all week. That's it for now as regards cucumbers. As I'll show you how many we have in a moment. Now if you're growing the cucumbers outdoors, just remember they might need a little bit more water, although we do have to give them a lot of water indoors as well. If the leaves on your indoor ones start to spoil at the bottom, don't worry, chop them off. I do, and I never have any trouble with them at all. Right, now I'll show you what we've picked and we better have a look at these tomatoes. There you are, that's two, four, seven good cucumbers from harvest. That's the cucumbers done. 
I might be burping a bit this week with all these. Now we need to have a quick look at these tomatoes as one or two won't stop in. And I just want to show you what I do to the bottom leaves and then we're going to show you what we've harvested. Right, I'm still tying, feeding once a week, watering twice a day. And some of the tomatoes now have got to the top. It's got plenty of trusses on, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's actually got seven, so I'm going to stop it up there. I don't want it brushing on the glass. Let's take that off. We just use the second tier, so just take that off. That's that one stopped. The other thing I do, some people do this, some don't. I like to do it. If you're watering your tomatoes with the hose pipe or cold water, the bottom leaves always go a bit curly and not very nice. We always keep our cans in the greenhouse, so we're always using water the same temperature, hopefully, as the greenhouses. But I always remove the bottom leaves to the first truss. So I'll do one and show you, and then you can make up your decision whatever way you want to do it. Now, I don't know if you can see, but the first truss the first, first truss is there, showing colour, doing nicely. And all the leaves below that, I'm going to remove. So this, I'll do it and show you. There's, the tr there's that. Take, I'll just take them off with the second tier. Take them away, obviously, you don't want these out in there. And then, this one that's hanging half at that one, and we'll half that one as well. It gives it more room and then I can keep the compost level and keep so it's tied at the bottom and anything coming up the stem the first first thing that gets the goodness will be this trusted tomatoes so I'll do that on all the tomatoes as I go around so we've got that nice clean there you are look, if I do that just nip that you've got that nice clean stem Always clean up after you in your greenhouse. Don't let these rot down in here. They're full of fungus and all sorts. Now, before we nip to show you what we've done, I'll just show you the uh, box peppers, the sweet peppers, how well they're doing. You can see that one's got a few little peppers on it. The other one over here has got a few on it. Doing quite well. They're open pollinated by the insects that come in the greenhouse. And everything in here seems to be doing rather well. It's just a case of keeping it well watered and now. Remember that the peppers don't really need so much water as the tomatoes. And then the cucumbers need more water than the tomato. But you'll find the balance there and just keep, keep it up twice a day, feed once a week. Take the bottom leaves off. We'll take some of the foliage off later on when it's getting in the way. But in the meantime, let's just keep watering and feeding and keep bringing them on. Now, this is what we've picked on a very wet week. So we'll call this the wet week harvest. We've got some very nice new potatoes, foremost. Some lovely rhubarb, courgettes, Super, everything's a little bit dirty, but that's only the mud and that will wash off. Some beautiful tall lettuce, some nice onions, there's red, there's the brown skins, and then there's the white ones there. The broad beans, they'll be seen to and frozen. Cucumbers, I think we'll be giving some of those away, far too many, but never mind. Some wonderful cabbage. They're as hard as anything. Some lovely broccoli, two kohlrabi. I like the kohlrabi a little bit smaller than that if possible, but they'll be fine. We've got some beautiful white currants. Absolutely superb. Some lovely strawberries. They're getting towards the end, but they're so sweet and unbelievable. Some sour cherries, I won't have one of those until they're cooked and got sugar on. And a few red currants to mix with the strawberries for tea tonight. They'll go nice, they will. So that's 
quite a nice little harvest for a wet week. So, as I said, it was Saturday today. I was at the wedding yesterday. Congratulations to Dawn and Dave on your wedding. I hope you enjoy your lives together. And I'd just like to say thank you to Ray and Liv. We had a pleasant evening with you. Right now, before we wrap it this week, we'll just say happy 1st of July to our friends in Canada and happy 4th of July to our friends in America. Do all have a good time and see if you can get a drink on us over here. Right now, we need to wrap it up this week. Sorry it's a little short, but the weather hasn't been with us, etc. So that will be about it for this week. Thank you for subscribing, everyone. And hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye now.